units. So for this first problem, uh, we're gonna have a double pulley, but uh, so we have each of the double pulleys shown has a mass moment of inertia of 15, and this is kind of typo. It's gonna be pounds times feet times seconds square and uh, if you take a look at the units and you kind of play, play a little bit with it you'll see like this is gonna be basically uh, mass so this should be in SI unit this should be kilogram times uh, meter square I think so but like, like I said if you just um, so for those units you, you'll make sure like pounds force times feet times times second square is the same as mass times um, meter square all right so uh, these double pulleys are initially at rest all right and then the outside radius is 18 inches and the inner radius is 9 inches and we need to determine the angular acceleration of each pulley and uh, well uh, we need to assume and it's also kind of logic that this angular acceleration is gonna be constant then the angular velocity of each pulley after point A point A right there, right here, right here, right here. So that point A on the cord has moved 10 feet. All right, so we're gonna solve these two cases, case A and B for problem one and two. So this guy and these two, right? Uh, because the other two are just gonna be pretty much the same, the same idea so i think if we solve for those two um will be good we will get a good understanding of what is going on here all right so let's see um, the only difference that we are having here between one and two is that for one we have a point of force applied at point a and uh, for case two or system two uh, we have a mass we don't have a pure force we have a mass with a weight of 160 pounds force so what is gonna happen here is like this mass right here it's gonna carry some inertia right so if we have a mass that it's moving um, that mass in motion it got inertia and that's not gonna happen for the first part of the problem all right so let's see if we want to solve for the angular acceleration i recommend you to use the um, equation of motion but first what we're gonna do we're gonna write our uh, free body diagram and that's gonna be equal to the kinetic diagram and we have done this already but uh, we haven't done it um, applying the um, the moment equation let me actually give myself some extra room there we go so this is gonna be the kinetic diagram there we go so now if we look at the free body diagram uh, it's pretty straightforward so we have a uh, support right here right like the pulley is going to be rotating at that point so we're going to have uh, the weight of the entire system and that's going to be mass time gravity then we're going to have a reaction right in the y but also a reaction in the x direction and then um let's see we're gonna just this is gonna be my the line of the rope right that's that's really bad it looks awful i don't know oh, there we go now i'm kind of messing up but let me try to solve this so this is gonna be let's say this is point a yeah i just want to make this clear for you 
and, uh, and now we are gonna have this force right here right and this is gonna be 160 pounds force I kind of like writing that F right there which means pounds force because um, it's gonna be pretty clear with uh, the units that I'm dealing with you know I just want to make sure you all know that I'm talking about um, pounds force and not pounds mass all right so next my kinetic diagram is basically gonna be like this thing it will rotate this way right because um, that this point of force is gonna make it rotate in that direction and that the rotation is gonna be the mass moment of inertia respect the center point that I'm just gonna call G so IG times alpha and that G stands for the center of gravity right all right so we get this part which is very very important now I'm just gonna write the equation of motion for the, the moment so summatory of moment at point G equal to I G times alpha all right that's all I need to do so let's solve for this we're gonna have um, okay the only force that is creating a moment right here it's gonna be in the 160 pounds force so it's gonna be 160 pounds force times the radius the uh, inner radius or, or just the radius of the first pulley is gonna be nine inches but of course I need to convert that to feet so just multiply by one feet and I divide it by 12 inches okay cool that's my first part of the equation summatory of moment respect the center of gravity then next um, it's going to be equal to i j times alpha and i j is pretty much given and that's pretty nice it's 15 so this guy right here it's going to be 15 um, we said pounds pounds um, times feet per times second square all right um so now if we solve for alpha right here and i think this pound i'm not sure i mean you, you would need to double check but i think this pound is pounds force let me actually do a double check real quick so inches with inches those go away then pounds force with pounds for that goes away fit with fit goes away and then you're gonna end up having radians per second square so yeah this the, this is given in pounds force all right that let me let me write that right here i mean you don't need to do that but i just like doing it i think it's clearer if we do it so if we solve for this we are gonna have eight radians per second square and that's the first part of the problem there we go cool nice then um okay let's solve real quick for the uh, omega velocity right so the angular velocity at the point where um point a is 10 feet so we just need to apply kinematics for this part there we go and we know that the distance is going to be 10 feet and we know that this s distance is going to be equal to the inner radius times this um, angular displacement right like if I have a circumference and I want to calculate how much is 
the length from this point to this point. So all of let me let's do this. This length right here. What I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna multiply. Um, so this one right. Here, oh sh there we go. So this right here is gonna be my delta theta. And if I wanna calculate this s right here, I just need to take s. Um, it's gonna be my radius multiplied by delta theta. And that's just basically gonna be how much uh, how much the um, let's see so how much the the pulley and twist which is those 10 feet so if we solve for that we're gonna have um, basically delta theta equal to 10 feet over um, the radius and I remember so the radius is gonna be uh, 9 inches and again we need to convert that to the right units there we go and that's gonna be equal to 13.3 radians now if we use kinematics more specifically we use this equation I'm just gonna write here final which is what we are trying to solve this is gonna be the initial uh, omega right plus 2 times the angular acceleration times the displacement angular displacement so this guy right here is gonna be equal to 0 just because we don't have like we start from rest and we have the rest of the stuff in here so we can just go ahead and solve for Omega, which is 14.6 radians per second. Go in this direction. So let's try to put all of this in a square because that's my second solution, right? Like the second part that I was trying to solve for. All right, right on. We got the first part done pretty nice all right let's take a look at the problem again and again we have like this puntal force at that point and then we have the second case which is the case that we are gonna do next right and, um, and I'm wondering what is your thought like do you think the acceleration of one is going to be greater than the acceleration of the case two or all the way around? Like, what are your thoughts? What would you expect to happen? Well, I mean, the logic tells me that the, um, the acceleration of one is going to be greater than the acceleration of two because we don't need to overcome those inertias at the, the point. Uh, so at the... Um, those inertias generated by this mass right here. That's what the logic tells me. But it might be, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's gonna, that's what's gonna happen. But we're gonna demonstrate it. All right. Let Let's keep going. So second case. Let's do that in green. Let's make this line right here. And so zoom in, and there we go. So, again, we're gonna do my free body diagram. So, I get my double pulley equal to my um, kinetic diagram. Now, we're gonna have similar stuff going on here, right? But this right here is gonna be a mass, and same thing here. This right here is gonna be a mass, right? Nothing changed between the free body diagram and the kinetic diagram. So now, um, let's actually do this with a different color. So here we're gonna have 
mass times gravity. This is going to be 160 pounds. Now the reaction is going to be R Y. The reaction in this, in the X, in the X component is going to be R X. There we go. So I think I got all my, all my forces in there. Right. Next kinetic diagram. Okay. So this pulley, just the fact that that pulley is rotating, it's going to be an, an inertia, which is going to be I. Ij times alpha, and then this mass right here is gonna get a, an acceleration, right? Which is mass times um, the acceleration of that of this block. There we go. So again, now this mass moving down, it's gonna generate an extra inertia that needs to be overcome by the system. And we will need to account for that. And let's see how we are gonna do that. Again, equations of motion, also called the second law of Newton. So um, there we go. So we're gonna have positive in that direction, summatory of moment respect to the center of gravity equal to um, well let me actually so this is gonna be equal to i j times alpha right so far so good so far is just the same as we have done for case one but now we also need to add one extra inertia which is gonna be mass times acceleration and then times re mm. there we go okay so now we are accounting for this too um, let's solve for this so you can have 160 pounds let me rewrite this pounds force times um, alpha we don't know that that's what we need to solve no 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 pounds force times um, re and that's gonna be nine inches times one foot over 12 inches all right so this right here, I just want to be clear, is that part. The part from the free body diagram. Okay, then this is going to be equal to ij, and we know that. Let's double check how much was that. That was 15, right? Pounds force. Okay, so that's going to be 15 pounds force feet per second square times alpha and that's what we need to solve then plus mass right here the mass is gonna be 160 pounds force divided by the acceleration of gravity there we go that's gonna be my mass then acceleration, we don't know, I'm just gonna write acceleration, and 10 times Ri. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna solve acceleration because the acceleration is gonna be equal to, um, let's see, the, so the acceleration is gonna be equal to alpha times Re. There we go. So that's pretty much the acceleration. Um, this is in a similar way when we solve for omega, so same. So then, if we solve for that, let's let's rewrite this entire equation. Um, I'm just gonna do that real quick. It's gonna be 160 uh, 
pounds fours multiply by nine twelve feet that's the first part equal fifteen there we go is that right yes times uh, alpha plus and I'm gonna rewrite this entire thing so it's gonna be alpha times 9 over 12 this is gonna be square right because we get this and this so it's gonna be r i square uh, fit square as well and finally this mass term there we go okay now you long and i'm pretty sure you will like this unit mm. but it is how it is so we need to do with that all right this is okay square right here okay now you can see that the only unknown is this guy right there but we can actually go ahead and solve for that and the acceleration for this second case is going to be 6.74 radians per second square so let's put that in a square and that's that's pretty much the the angular acceleration and again you can so for the first case we get right here 8 radians per second square and for the second case we get less acceleration which is which kind of makes sense because like i said from rest to this um, acceleration we need to overcome all of those inertias and uh, and that's gonna decrease the acceleration of the entire system then uh, let's solve for the second part mm -hmm. so delta theta is gonna be 13.3 radians same as before and if we solve for the omega final it's gonna be 2 times alpha times the increment of theta and that's gonna give us an omega final of 13.41 radians per second so we get that too which is also less than before right we got 14.6 14.6 radians per second and now we get 13.41 radians per second all right so that's the the first problem that we are doing in this video lecture um, like I said, these two cases, right, they are, they, like, you know, you can do the rest of them, um, just, if you know how to do one and two pretty well, you can do three and four. Just make sure when you solve for three, make sure, like, you are counting for the right um, inertia, and uh, so, like, you're just making sure that thing is so you are counting for the right direction uh, and then that will help that will help you to solve the case three and four um and i think that's it let's go ahead and solve problem two all right so let's come back here problem two this problem right here and i think for this problem well let, let's see what we have going on here so a disc of radius eight inches has a drum of radius four inches attached to it the combined weight of the two is 10 pounds and again this this is pounds force but whatever and the combined Combined radius of duration is six inches. A force P of five pounds is applied to a touch core as shown. The coefficient of kinetic and static friction are UK or like new K 
equal 0.2 and new s equal 0.25 respectively. Determine the following for all three cases. And I think we're just gonna do this case because it's the most complete. So whether or not the disk slides, the angular acceleration of the disk, and finally the acceleration of G. So the uh, translation now acceleration of point G, right? So G. Anyway, let's see how we can solve for this. This problem is gonna be just a little bit more complicated, but it's gonna be exactly the same idea as we have been doing before. Um, like I said, we're gonna solve for KC, and we're gonna do it in a similar way that we have been doing before. So again, we're gonna have this entire system here, and we are going to make the free body diagram to be equal to the kinetic diagram. So this is going to be my uh, free body diagram and this is going to be my kinetic diagram. There we go. So again, this, this is my case. So we're going to have weight right on the center of gravity that's gonna be my weight then uh, we can have this force for this case right right here that force which is pulling the entire thing that's P then we're gonna have a normal force and finally a friction force against the radius uh, against the motion right and then the um, kinematic diagram it's gonna be so I mean if it's this is like going this way so um I'm just gonna make the honestly like if I'm pulling like this P so I'm I'm just gonna write the I alpha just like this, it doesn't really matter my direction, like as long as I'm consistent with my sign convention and I usually, I mean, I'll, I always use this. This is positive in the Y, this is positive in the X and this is positive in the moment direction. Well, I mean, I'm not even sure what I used for this. No, I actually use it like this, positive like that. I will say. Like it doesn't really matter as long as we are consistent with our sign convention, we will get the the right uh, solution. But one more kinematics on this problem is gonna be the translation of this wheel, which is mass times acceleration uh, at the center of gravity. All right. So let's go back here. What do what do I need to calculate? Whether or not the disc slides, B the angular acceleration of the disc, and C acceleration of point G. So what I'm gonna do right here, I'm just gonna set and solve for my equations of motion. There we go. So let's see. Summatory forces in the y is equal to mass times acceleration at the center of gravity in the y component. So this is gonna be equal to the weight, right? Times, well, minus the normal and uh, equal to mass times acceleration at point J in the y. But we all know that this thing is not gonna take off from the ground. It's just gonna be moving in the x direction. So that's gonna be equal to zero. And that's kind of nice because we can solve for n. So n for this specific case is gonna be equal to 10 pounds force, which is the weight of the entire system basically the, the wheel with the drum. 
All right, we got it. we sold for something that always that always feels good. Let's keep solving, and now we're just gonna analyze the equation of motion in the x component. So in the x, we're gonna have p positive minus friction force equal mass time acceleration in the x. Now I can just call a j, but uh, a g. I think I've been messing that up. A g. Uh, yep. Probably I messed that up the entire time while I was recording this video lecture. But not j. That's a j for sure, right? <laughs> All right. So we get this equation right here. And um, and let's see. I mean, do we know p? Um, yes, we know it's five pounds force. Do we know friction force? No, we don't know. But just gonna make parentheses right here. Uh, F F is equal to the normal force times um, U S or U K depends on the problem. Like if it's a sliding, then it's gonna be U K. Well, I mean new K, and if it's like a static or a static problem, it'll be new S. All right, we don't know the acceleration and we know the mass, so let's actually do something. I kind of like doing this, use this, so we know this. We don't know. Well, we we can we can figure out this. Um, we know the mass, but we don't know the acceleration. Now let's keep solving. We still need to solve for the uh, summatory of moments respect g. It's gonna be equal to um i g times alpha. All right. Okay. So. Let's do that first. So if we solve for this, this is gonna be. Uh, let's see. We're gonna have the friction force is gonna create a uh, momentum, and I think that's gonna be positive, right? Yeah. And p, it's also gonna create a momentum, but it's gonna be negative. And uh, we have different moment. Mm, sorry, it's gonna create a moment. We're gonna have different uh, moment arms, right? So for F, it's gonna be uh, at the um, it's gonna be the outer radius, and for P, it's gonna be at the inner radius. So that's what we need to use uh, to solve for the, those moments. And then this is gonna be equal to I G alpha. There we go. All right. So let's see what are we gonna do next. So let's skip. Let me see. We got. So we know this, right? We know this, right? We know P. We know this. Okay. Um, we can solve for the mass moment of inertia and then um, we don't know that this right here okay we don't know this all right let's solve for the mass mass moment of inertia um, just give me a second right here so since we are given the radius of duration, we can actually solve for that. I'm just gonna do here, like you know, I open my parentheses, and the um, mass moment of inertia is gonna be the radius of duration k square. So the radius of duration 
square times the mass. And that's just a parameter that we use to easily calculate the, um, the mass moment of inertia. So if we solve for this, it's going to be 6 inches over 12 inches per feet. The entire thing is going to be square and multiply by the mass, which is 10 over 32.2. This feet per second square and this is gonna be pounds force. So I got my mass. Finally, IG is equal to um, 0 0.0776 um, I'm just gonna write this as slag times feet square. Alright, so I got my IG. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so let's see what is next. So what we are gonna do, what we are going to do first, we are gonna assume, so we assume no slip. And if we do that, basically we're saying that AJX or AJ AG is equal to alpha times um, the outer radius. This is pretty much my no slip condition. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna assume that, and then we're gonna solve for uh, the friction force by using the equation of motions. And once we get the friction force, we're gonna compare that friction force with the static friction force. And based on that, we can, you know, we can figure out if uh, we can figure out if uh, the um, the wheel is slipping or not. All right, let me see what we got left. Basically, what we're gonna do now, we're just gonna solve for the friction force here. So let's see. Just gonna, let me move this because I wanna number these equations. Uh, this is gonna be, one, this is gonna be two. There we go. Now, from one, we get um, what we got. Um, it's gonna move stuff around, but we're gonna have. The mass, which is 10 over 32.2, the slag, it's the mass unit for the English units, times um, A, G, plus friction force. We want to solve for this friction force and compare it with the static friction force that we can calculate with our normal and um, new new x the static friction coefficient and this is gonna be so this is it's gonna be equal to five pounds force okay, that's gonna be my equation one my equation two uh, it's gonna be um, uh, uh, uh. <clears throat> so again uh, um, so let me see what we are going to be doing. I just want to make sure um, we don't get confused. So just need a second here to see what is going on. Um, okay, so what we are doing here we're going to have um, IG, which is point 
0776 slag fit square then uh, I'm gonna have a G over the radius at the of the so the outer radius the radius of the wheel so I don't know how much is that uh, I think it's eight inches so eight divided by twelve so these are inches and this will be inches per foot so then I have my units in fit okay so basically what I just did I saw for alpha which is a G over the radius of the wheel and I put this right here so this this is just this there we go then this is gonna be equal well yeah it's gonna be equal to 8 over 12 feet times friction force minus 5 pounds force times 4 over 12 feet and that's the rest of the equation so let's try to highlight that so this is gonna be this there we go all right so now we got two equations two unknowns the two unknowns are a g and friction force so we can actually go ahead and solve for this so we can have a j a g equal 5.16 feet per second square awesome and then uh, friction force equal 3.396 pounds force so this is good because now what we are gonna do to see if it's sleeping or not we're just gonna uh, compare it. so no slip for no slip condition the friction force that we have calculated should be less or equal than new s times the normal so we can actually go ahead so we can have 3.396 pounds force and we said this is my condition right less or equal and then we're gonna have 0.25 pounds force multiplied by uh, new s which no by the no 0.25 is the new s that's the coefficient no units on that and then multiply by 10 pounds force which is the weight of the normal uh, for this specific case and if we solve for this we're gonna have um, how much is that it's only 2.5 right so our force the one that we calculated is actually greater than the 2.5 pounds force so this means that a slip occurs then we need to solve this again we need to actually go ahead and solve for for the friction force but that's gonna be pretty straightforward now so the friction force now this is uh, this is a slipping so the friction force is gonna be kinetic friction force so to calculate that we need to multiply the normal force by nu k which is the kinetic coefficient 
uh, friction coefficient. So that's going to be equal to 10 pounds force multiplied by 0.2, the coefficient, and that's going to be 2 pounds force. And this is the friction force that we need to use now. So now we are going to take equation 1 and 2. And with these two equations, we can solve for, for the rest of the problem. So we are going to solve for, let, let's see, with 1 we have 5 pounds force minus 2 pounds force which is this friction force equal 10 over 32.2 slack and then multiply by AG so from here we can solve for AG and then from equation 2 we can have 2 pounds force multiply by that radius the outer radius minus 5 pounds force multiplied by the inner radius so the radius of the drum and then this is going to be equal to mass moment of inertia slack times theta square multiplied by alpha and from here we can actually solve for alpha which is going to be minus 4.3 radians per second square there we go and then we'll be done with this problem so um well this is kind of long problem um but uh, I think like case C is the most complicated one. Like, it kind of um, go over the two cases, right? Like for it goes over the case that no sleep is happening, just to check if it's actually happening or not. And um, if uh, we would have got a friction force that is actually here, right? That is actually less or equal than uh, 2.5 then we could have just said that um, alpha would be equal to ag over this right so we could actually you know under no slip condition we could solve alpha with this uh, with this equation but since it was sleeping so a sleep occurs uh, we had to kind of rewrite our equations and um, and solve under the sleep condition all right so I think that's all and um, I will post this I will send you an email just making sure like you know that this video lecture is available and uh, I 